chest up, shoulders back. Welcome to Revival Fitness, everybody. And today, I'm going to give you guys five reasons that you are struggling to get strong. And I want to make this a note before we begin, guys. I'm not talking exclusively in terms of maximum strength, a.k.a one rep maxes. I'm talking about gaining strength in general. This can be three reps, five, eight, 10, 12, whatever the case is. And we're gonna talk about this a little bit later on in the video, but even if you only care about aesthetics bra or hypertrophy, whatever the case is, you still fundamentally have to get stronger in some capacity to keep getting bigger. I don't understand why it's so hard for people to wrap their head around this, but if you believe that size and strength are these two totally foreign concepts, you're not very intelligent. And really, unless you compete in strength sports, there's really no need to max out ever. Now I do it myself too, I know it's very fun to do, especially as young guys, you're going to max out, there's no stopping the ego component of it, but there's really no need to max out from a tangible perspective unless you are competing in say powerlifting, strength lifting, or something like that. And one last note too here guys, strength progress, at least outside of the novice phase, is not going to be totally linear, okay? If you're at the point now where you're benching around like maybe 200 or two plates or so, squatting 300, kind of general ranges like that, you're like, I can't keep adding plus five to the bar every week. Well, you're not supposed to be, right? You're not a novice anymore. Once your initial beginner gains fully wear out, guys, you're not gonna be able to keep adding the even plus five every single week. If that was the case, people would be out here deadlifting literal tons of weight. So outside of the novice phase, guys, and that's going to vary per person based on leverages, kind of genetic strong points, things like that. So based on the individual, this is going to vary in some capacity. But fundamentally, guys, once you're out of the newbie gains phase, your progress is inevitably going to get slower. So don't think that you're doing something massively wrong just because you can't keep adding plus five indefinitely. Now, with that said, though, if you are a novice, which is what most of you are going to be, demographically speaking, if you're unable to add plus five on a weekly or at least pretty regular basis to your lifts, something's going pretty wrong here, dude. So let's dive into the reasons why this may be happening for you. Sign number one here, short rest times. And let's just take a second here to forget all of the science-based stuff on YouTube and on social media fitness today. Just use your thinking cap, okay? Use your common sense. Will resting longer after a set give you more energy for the next set? Pretty obvious, right? Actually, I need to see a study citing that this is the case. It's obvious, bro. The more rest you give yourself in between your sets and also your exercises in general, the more energy you're going to have down the line. Now, I'm not saying here that you need to be taking naps in between sets like some power lifters do. You don't need to be resting for seven, eight, nine, ten 10 minutes, okay? But for your heavier exercises especially, guys, particularly if you do focus on strength, the low rep ranges, Resting for three up to five minutes in between your sets is perfectly fine. In some cases, you could even argue that it's necessary. A clear trend you will notice in gyms is this. The guys who take shorter rest periods are almost always weaker and smaller than the guys who rest longer. And the funny thing is, the small and weak guys think that short rest times are inherently better because the pump stays with the shorter rest times. Guys in the gym who obsess about getting the pump do so because they're small. So they have to get the pump because it's the only time that they actually look big. The pump goes away a few minutes after your workout ends. Real muscle and strength that you build in the gym stays with you 24 seven. And real muscle and strength is built in the trenches, not in the mirror. Okay, guys, you wanna to get to the point where you can roll out of bed in the morning, totally flat, no food and no pump, and be bigger than your clueless gym bro when he has a pump. So regardless of the rep range that you are using, gaining strength fundamentally stems from two primary things. The first is becoming neurologically efficient at a movement through consistent form 
and range of motion. You guys might notice whenever you watch power lifters on Instagram or on YouTube, whenever they perform their lifts, they always look exactly the same. Like you could clip together weeks of training footage of the same lift and it barely looks any different. That's not a coincidence. The more neurologically efficient you get at a lift, the more you can hammer down the form and make it second nature through the full range of motion, that's where the sweet spot is. So assuming that you're becoming neurologically efficient with the exercises, you're not always relying on spotters, your form can be performed with your eyes closed at second nature, the next thing you have to worry about is gaining muscle mass so that your strength can perform at its fullest potential. And then of course these same guys will cherry pick some 1% example of some small guy or some tiny woman benching three, four times their body weight, deadlifting six times their body weight. Once again, guys, like I always say, open challenge for you. Do it yourself, okay? As a dude, stay 150 to 160 pounds and tell me whenever you bench 315. It's not gonna happen. So going back to the main point, whether you're doing a one rep max or a 12 rep set, whatever the case is, by rushing through these rest times, you are artificially handicapping your own strength. And this is especially true for the biggest and heaviest lifts that you do. Squat variations, types of deadlifts, bench presses, overhead presses, things like that, kind of the bread and butter of your training program for most people, or at least it should be. Rushing through those is not good at all. Because not only does your body need to recover from the intensity of those sets, because they're full body exercises for the most part, your mind needs to recover too, right? Those type of things are mentally taxing, right? Your core is bracing, gripping the weight, all your internal cues, all this stuff. Maybe you're bench pressing, focusing on one spot on the ceiling, keeping your head in the same position, right? All these kind of cues are happening at one time. It takes time for your whole body to kind of just decompress after an intense set. Like I said, open challenge, man. Go ahead and do your 60 second rest breaks lose overall volume because you cannot replicate the same number of reps per set with the same weight or even better keep lowering the weight you use across your sets because you're too exhausted from the short rest times also decreasing your total volume it's a no-win scenario so moving on to issue number two with gaining strength insufficient recovery and this is a multifaceted problem both in and out of the gym so we're gonna start guys with the basics outside of the gym, food and sleep. I don't wanna to spend too much time on these two points because they're pretty obvious, right, once you get the hang of them. But I'm gonna give you guys just a few pointers that I've experienced. So first things first, I'm cutting right now, but I still have to tell all of you skinny novices to bulk. Every single week I get questions, hey man, I'm average height and like 162 pounds. I think I have a little bit of love handle though. Do you think I need to cut? Yeah, bro, you do. You need to cut Athlean X, Greg Doucette, and Kina Body out of your life and start eating more. As a beginner, guys, in the gym, unless you are medically overweight or obese, you have no reason to cut. You have no muscle mass. Where's it gonna come from? And the second external recovery factor here is sleep. Now, what most people you hear are gonna say roughly seven to eight hours a night. I would agree with that. I usually get around seven, seven and a half myself. I feel pretty good there. Some people might be able to get a little bit more. If you're a new parent, if you're very busy traveling for work, etc., you might not be able to get that many. Make the most of what you can, right? But regardless, guys, if you're somebody who's pulling all-nighters all the time, especially, I know a lot of you guys watching are high school, college age, you have no excuses, guys. Okay, I know you go out on the weekends and you party and you stay up till 2 a.m., whatever, that's fine. You're young and can recover from that. But on like a weeknight basis on your school nights, guys, go to bed. Go to bed. Seriously, these guys sit on their beds and play Xbox and stare at their phones, all this light hitting their face until the wee hours of the morning. Then you get, what, four hours of sleep, and then it's like, man, I didn't hit a PR this week. It's like, yeah, no crap, bro. You're too tired. So some tips I like to use, dim the lights maybe an hour or so before you go to bed, turn off all the big screens, lower the brightness on your phone, turn off any loud music, things like that. If you notice that you have trouble staying asleep or falling asleep, a supplement like melatonin can help. There's basically no side effects. It's very cheap. I would say it's worth trying. The next thing, too much volume 
and or intensity. And I see this over and over and over. Every time I do a consultation, talk to someone about coaching, whether it's on Patreon, email, whatever it is, okay? Every single time it goes like this. They go, hey man, I've been lifting for X amount of time. My lifts are somewhere in the novice range, right? As expected. And I'll say, hey, what's your program? And like clockwork, every single freaking time, uh, push pull legs six days a week. Push pull legs, push pull legs. The push pull leg worship among novice lifters is incredible. It's like their brain literally cannot comprehend that you can do something else besides six days a week. I tell these guys all the time, man, you will get more gains on a properly structured three or four day program than you will going to the gym more on a six day program. And they still don't want to do it. These guys would rather go to the gym more for less gains and then they're going to justify it because, oh, well, I like training. It's like, no, dude, you're just a 16 year old with nothing to do. You have no responsibilities. You want to go to the gym all the time because that's all you have to do. Once you get a little bit older, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Aside though, push-pull legs is not the only culprit here. So I've discussed this recently in my video about training to failure, when and when not to. But you obviously do need a sufficient amount of both volume and intensity. Both thresholds need to be met to see optimal growth. With that said though, the average gym bro vastly overestimates how much volume they need and they still fall for the bro science that you have to push every single exercise to peak intensity to or past failure to see gains. Assuming that you are performing quality sets, good exercise selection with full range of motion and other good components of form guys, most muscles don't need anything more than what? I'd say eight to 12 sets per week to fully grow. These guys are on here doing 25 sets a week for just their chest. And then they're surprised whenever they struggle to gain strength. Quality volume versus junk volume, okay? And I'll say this, guys. If you're doing a legitimate quality volume, as I mentioned, full range of motion, good exercises, all this stuff, you should not even have the energy to do junk volume. And on top of that, too, you shouldn't even have the time. Okay, guys, if you're in the gym multiple days a week for three plus hours, you need to get a job. Some of these guys are in the gym three plus hours. They're doing 10, 12, 15 exercises in one day. And quick note here too, snorting a bunch of pre-workout before you lift like a crackhead is not helping your case either. I'll tell you this, guys. If you've been in the gym for an hour or more, you've already done one, two, three exercises and you're barely fatigued, you're still amped up, ready to hit a bunch of machines and other exercises, your training needs a complete overhaul. If you perform a quality volume now with proper form and all that other stuff attached to it, you know that only a handful of exercises per muscle group per week is more than enough to see size and strength gains. So if you're one of these guys who's going all out on the intensity and or the volume on a weekly basis because you think it's hardcore macho bra, you think you have to do it to get results, don't be surprised when the bar sticks again. So those first two points were pretty extensive, but there are three more. And before we get to them, ladies and gentlemen, it's the algorithm. So reason number three, you're struggling to get strong, variation. And this is kind of an open-ended point because there are two sides of this spectrum. A lot of people end up doing a too little variation for their own good, while others end up doing too much. So on the point of too much variation, that's kind of like what we've been talking about, right? The junk volume, go from the dumbbell to the machine, to the barbell, to the second machine, to the push-up, all this stuff, right? They can never focus in on one movement pattern for a prolonged period because their mind doesn't let them because they think, oh, I have to chase the pump and do everything except the kitchen sink to get a muscle to grow. Now, on the other hand, a lot of beginners who find actual decent programs like strong lifts, something like that, starting strength, kind of a basic three-day full body template, those templates are very good in their own right for total beginners. I've said that before and I stand by that. However, the more experienced you get in the gym, and I would even argue that as a total beginner, you can still handle more exercise variation than just the big five or six. Those programs become too limited in their variation right off the bat. 
So every week it's uh, the back squat, the deadlift, the bench press, the press, maybe a row or a pull-up or chin-up, and that's it. That's all you're going to be doing. And once again, if you're totally new, you can absolutely make progress for a number of months doing only those things. But as you get more experienced, and especially as you get more strong on the bigger exercises like this, variation is going to open a whole new door of gains. Intelligently applied variation is going to let you hit new angles, maybe do some one-legged exercises to reduce fatigue, which can especially become very big for the squat and the deadlift, namely if you tend to get low back stress relatively easily. You can work on different movement patterns, maybe do a neutral grip for some of your pressing. You can more directly target specific muscles that might not get hit as adequately as you would like, given your leverages on the compounds. You can shore up weak points with some isolation exercises. All this type of stuff comes with doing more variation, assuming that it's not excessive. And I can tell you for myself, guys, many of you have probably experienced this too. Once your initial noob gains do run out, if you don't start varying up your training, whether it's different rep ranges, different exercises, whatever the case is, those plateaus are going to hit you hard. Unless you want to just bloat max your way into PRs over and over for the rest of your life, you're going to have to start varying things up. So like I said, there's numerous ways to vary exercises and movement patterns, maybe change up equipment. You also can vary things with periodization, maybe trying using percentages, Instead of going plus five every week, do dynamic double, work up to a set number of reps in a rep range with the same weight, and then up the weight after that. So there's a number of options, guys. I can make a full video coming up about all the ways to vary your training. But just know this, if you are doing next to no variation, or if you're doing endless variation, different things, hopscotch on the machines every single week, in either case, you're going to struggle to get strong. Now, reason number four you're struggling to get strong, half reps, or at least inconsistent reps. So we touched on this earlier, guys, not gonna spend a ton of time on it here, but what is the main reason guys do half reps? I know some guys are gonna claim, oh, it's constant tension, brah. That's a coping mechanism and you know it. Stretching a muscle further inherently gives you more of a stretch and it's gonna put more tension on the target muscle. Now you can make the case that some exercises benefit more or less from doing paused reps, but on a fundamental level, if you're doing at least a sufficient range of motion and not just half repping, barely moving the arms, doing quarter squats, etc., you're going to be getting more gains. And this is the ultimate ego stuff that guys use in the gym, right? Oh, I can dumbbell bench 100s. Then you watch them do it. Their spotter's helping them. They're barely lowering the weight. They get up. Oh, yeah, I did it, bro. You didn't do shit. You probably could do 70s, if that, through a full range of motion by yourself. And this is how the ego can play dirty little tricks on you. Because you will start half-repping all your exercises. In your mind, you think you're stronger. And you may actually be stronger on paper because you can do the half-reps for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 extra pounds, but you're not actually building true strength. Another thing I notice here with the half repping too, I see this with a lot of clients, guys will tend to do the full range of motion for half of the set. So say we're doing a set of 10, reps one to five, all good, full range of motion all the way down, all that stuff. As soon as the reps start to get difficult, that's when the half repping is gonna start. So they'll squat to parallel, to parallel, to parallel, to parallel, Oh, a little bit above parallel. Next rep. Oh, kind of above parallel a good amount. Then by that final rep, they're almost quarter squatting the weight, right? Because as it gets harder and harder toward the set's end, as the intensity threshold goes up and up and up, they like to short the range of motion to compensate for that. That, once again, is a no-no. And like I tell you guys all the time, dude, you need to record your sets. Because guys will swear, oh, I went all the way down, I lowered it to my chest, all this stuff. The video footage oftentimes will indicate otherwise. So don't underestimate your ability to lie to yourself, guys. Especially as young men, right? There's other dudes you want to posture for. There's girls you want to lift more, all this stuff. Your ego will bury you in the gym. Stay on top of it so that cannot happen. So any reps, guys, that you perform that deviate from the established full range of motion you do at the beginning of the exercise those do not count. And wrapping up here, the final sign that you're struggling to gain strength, mental hangups. A lot of people have some type of mental hangup 
when it comes to one or more exercises or movement patterns. Most guys inherently sandbag their leg training. If you don't know what sandbag means, it basically implies that you don't give full effort to something. I see this in my gym every single time I'm there. These guys go squat and they go nice and slow and they come up smooth. They make it look like it's some exercise tutorial on a video. You know what I mean? Why do they do this? Because training legs hurts. It's not comfortable, especially if you're a long-legged dude with a good range of motion. I know, man, it does not feel very good. Okay, but if you want to get as strong as possible, get as big as possible, you're going to have to push through that eventually. This is also commonly seen with deadlifts too, because a lot of guys will kind of have lingering low back pain. A lot of times it's placebo, right? They think their low back is in all this excruciating pain. They probably just were sitting for eight hours a day and it's a little bit stiff. You could just do a couple stretches and start training and warming up. It's going to feel fine, right? But they'll be like, oh man, I can't deadlift heavy because my back doesn't feel good, right? And once again, there's a point to be made for legitimate past injuries and such, but most guys are faking it. We all know that. Oh, my back is broken. No, it's not. My back is broken. What, a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. And something else, too, that's a mental hang-up is if you have a certain exercise that you really struggle with or that you have historically struggled with for a long time. So for me, that's the bench press. So if you have an exercise, guys, that you have repeatedly been plateaued on, oftentimes for the reasons we mentioned earlier, right? But if you've plateaued on it a lot, if it's historically hard for you, if it's a bad leverage lift for you, maybe you've gotten injured on it before because you were doing bad form or too much volume or something, a lot of times people will struggle to mentally get in the zone and fully push themselves on the exercise that has screwed them over in the past. So for example, if you're gonna go do the bench press, right? And you're dying for that 225, I'm gonna finally hit the 225. You get under the bar and you start to psych yourself out. Oh man, oh God, I don't know, my shoulder kind of hurts. Oh man, did I eat enough last night? Did I sleep enough last night? Did I do this or that or this? You start to mentally psych yourself out and basically nocebo yourself into losing strength. And this can be difficult to overcome, right? This is usually not something you can just snap yourself out of or watch one motivational video or do your pre-workout bra or take your nootropic and suddenly get better at it. Those things might potentially help, but it's just gonna take time right? Work your way back up with a good weight. Make sure your form is good. If you have been injured on a lift before, guys, and you're kind of getting back into it, once again, ensure your form is good. Test out lighter weights. Don't just dive back into the heavy weight to get vengeance on it. You see what I mean? But there is a way to overcome this mental blockade, so to speak. And guess what it is? Intelligent training. Quality volume, proper recovery, just basically rewatch this video. But if you have that mental blockade now, guys, and you think it's insurmountable, I can promise you it's not. If you tend to mentally zone out and kind of doubt yourself and all this stuff, it is going to be harder on you than it needs to be. And I am happy to help you with that. So if you guys are looking for consultations about your own training, custom programs, full online coaching, including weekly form checks, all this good stuff, I'm happy to help you out. Just hit me up. Links in the description of the video. We'll get to work. But this has been the video, guys. I don't know how long this is going to be. Probably a while. I've been talking here for a hot minute now. But thank you for watching. Thank you, as always, to the Patreon supporters and the channel members. Like, comment, subscribe, as you're obligated to do as a loyal viewer of this channel. Thank you for watching. I think I already said that. I need to go eat something. I keep talking, and I'm going to stop talking. Take care.